So, have you heard about the great mystery of the Ceratopsian dinosaurs? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. There's a mystery that surrounds the horned and frilled dinosaurs called the Ceratopsia, the horned top dinosaurs. This is the group that includes the iconic Triceratops. The Ceratopsia are a group of the Margicephala. This is a group of dinosaurs that are restricted to the northern hemisphere, and they're only known from uh, North America, Europe, and Asia. The Ceratopsians originated during the late Jurassic from some sort of small ornithischian, that's a bird-hipped dinosaur. But the major mystery is which continent did the Ceratopsians originate from? Now, prior to 2010, uh, most paleontologists pointed to Asia as the place that the Ceratopsian dinosaurs originated from. In 2004, Chinese paleontologists described the earliest Ceratopsian dinosaur from the late Jurassic, the teeny tiny little Yinglong, which measures about 20 centimeters long. This tiny dinosaur showed many characteristics of the great group of dinosaurs that would later include giants like Triceratops. Yinglong exhibited the major expansion of the posterior bones of the skull, including the squamosal bones, which formed a tiny little frill. The skull also had a small rostral bone on the tip of the premaxilla an indentation of the cheek teeth characteristic of the Genosauria group of Ornithischian dinosaurs. The dinosaur was a little bipedal, that meant it ran around on its hind legs, and it had longer hind legs and shorter forelegs. Fore it was a, a small chicken-sized dinosaur living during the late Jurassic. This dinosaur was strong evidence that the oldest Ceratopsian dinosaurs were from Asia. Now, during the early Cretaceous, dozens of specimens of the basal ceratopsian Cetacosaurus have been found, a slightly larger goose-sized dinosaur from Asia. These little ceratopsian dinosaurs are also bipedal, with little beaked skulls and broad squamosal and jugal bones, characteristic of the later ceratopsian dinosaurs. Nesting sites filled with young hatchlings have been found of many articulated skeletons, so we know a lot about the anatomy of this little dinosaur. We also have feather impressions from Asia showing that Cetacosaurus, like other primitive Ornithischian dinosaurs, was covered in dino fluff along the back of the tail and may have been covered in a downy coat. Asia was also the place of a diverse group of early Cretaceous quadrupedal walking on four legs Ceratopsian dinosaurs called the Protoceratopsians, the small hornless group of dinosaurs. These included the dog-sized Archaeoceratops and the late middle Cretaceous Protoceratops. Protoceratops was about the size of a sheep and hundreds of skeletons have been discovered in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. We know um, a lot about the ontogeny, that's the growth series of Protoceratops, than, than any other dinosaur that's known. It's because of this very large collection that museums have amassed of specimens from the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. At the American Museum in New York, a large series of individual uh, skulls are on display showcasing the growth stages of Protoceratops from a tiny little hatchling to a full-sized adult. Now, Protoceratops was hunted by the coyote-sized Velociraptor, which is also found in the same deposits in Mongolia. The small and nimble Velociraptor hunted Protoceratops, and unfortunately, one sorry individual Velociraptor got its hand caught in the snapping beak of an unlikely Protoceratops, which it had killed with its sickle claw with a strike to the Protoceratops' belly. Now this specimen of two species of dinosaurs locked in death is one of the most incredible discoveries ever. Now these Protoceratopsians ruled Asia until the late Cretaceous, when they vanished from Asia. Now in North America, the Ceratopsian dinosaurs 
exploded in diversity from a handful of protoceratopsian dinosaurs that crossed over the Bering Passageway into North America, including the late Cretaceous Leptoceratops and Montanoceratops, two hornless sheep-sized dinosaurs that appeared in North America, which closely resemble protoceratops from Asia. North America saw a huge range of horns and frills, with ceratopsian dinosaurs becoming as large as tanks. These dinosaurs leapt out of Asia to become the dominant herbivore dinosaurs of North America, while in Asia the ceratopsian dinosaurs vanished, and no horned and frilled dinosaurs are known from Asia. So paleontologists theorized that Asia was the place of origin during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous. The Asian continent was isolated from Europe by a seaway, and basal ceratopsian dinosaurs like Cetacosaurus roamed this region. Sometime during the Middle Cretaceous, several of the protoceratopsian dinosaurs crossed over to North America, including the ancestors of North American ceratopsian dinosaurs. The western part of North America was isolated from the eastern part by a large seaway. And during the Middle to Late Cretaceous, the ceratopsian dinosaurs in North America diversified greatly to become giant, while in Asia, they went extinct. Now, such a theory is also played out well in the ceratopsian cladogram, or, or tree, supporting a single dispersal event with a single modified clade of North American ceratopsian dinosaurs. But I told you that there was a mystery afoot, and things got really complicated in 2010. When a fossil is discovered from Asia, it does not look like much, but this fossilized horny frilled edge of a skull was not expected to be found in Asia as it resembled a large horned ceratopsian from North America. Not the primitive chicken-sized dinosaurs from Asia. This late Cretaceous dinosaur was called Cenoceratops. It's the first large horned neoceratopsian from Asia and suddenly our theory seemed to be missing something. There were large, horned, and frilled dinosaurs in Asia? Then, in 2014, things got really weird. American paleontologists described a tiny basal ceratopsian from the early Cretaceous of Wyoming called Aquilops. Now, Aquilops was a teeny tiny little chicken-sized dinosaur that closely resembled Yinglong from China. Now this little chicken-sized dinosaur suddenly opened up the possibility that maybe perhaps North America had the most primitive ceratopsian dinosaurs and not Asia. So what was going on? Well, it appears that throughout the Cretaceous, both North America and Asia were connected and Ceratopsian dinosaurs were dispersing between the two continents quite frequently. The great mystery is that we've not found basal ceratopsian dinosaurs from North America until 2014. And in Asia, the large ceratopsian dinosaurs of the late Cretaceous have only been discovered since 2010. This means that there are likely many, many, many more species of ceratopsian dinosaurs from each continent, and that we've not searched out the late Cretaceous of Asia or the late Jurassic early Cretaceous of North America enough, hundreds of unique dinosaur species likely lay undiscovered in the badlands of both continents. Now you should be able to reconstruct the biogeography of ceratopsian dinosaurs and devise using a cladogram how various groups may have migrated between continents during the Cretaceous period.